Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is Brother Joe, and I'm so glad you joined me today to celebrate what our Lord and Savior did, dying on the cross for you and me and rising on this day. He has risen. He has risen indeed. Amen? Amen. So before we get into the word, I want to say a prayer. So please bow your heads. Pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we humbly come before your throne. We thank you, Lord, for sending your only begotten Son to come incarnated in human form, to die a crucifixion death, to be the sacrificial lamb, so we could be forgiven for our sins and live forever and ever, and put to death death forever and ever. And we thank you, Yeshua, Jesus, for being obedient unto death. And dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you fill me with your Holy Spirit, with double your Holy Spirit, or as much Holy Spirit as you so desire to give me. I thank you for putting the scriptures together for this day of worship. And I pray that it is your words that speak out of my mouth, not mine. And I pray your will always be done, not mine. I pray this in the precious name of Yeshua, Jesus. Amen. Amen, brothers and sisters. And sometimes you may hear me say Yeshua. That's how you say Jesus in Hebrew. So today is a new day, and tomorrow is going to get better. And it's going to get better because of what our Lord and Savior did for us on Calvary. And then he arose. He lives forever. No more death for us. No more death for anyone. You either go into heaven to be with our Lord and Savior, or you're going to go to hell and live forever down there. You understand? But you and I, brothers and sisters, are saved today. And we are celebrating that, and we just, words can't express how happy I am. I hope you feel the same way. Amen? Amen. So now, if you brought your Bibles today, please turn to the book of Acts, chapter 1. Now, to lay a foundation, when Jesus rose, you know that he first went and saw Peter. He saw the rest of the disciples. Prior, he saw Mary at the tomb. And then he ultimately sees 500 people at the same time. He walks on this earth for 40 days. Can you imagine how wonderful it would be? to walk side by side, or just be in the presence and listen to him talk to the people and witness that. And those witnesses went and shared with other people after he left to be next to the Father on the throne. And so we're going to read about the last day that he's here before he ascends to be with the Father. And we'll start reading in verse 6. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, 
Two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up unto heaven? This same Jesus who was taken up from you in, into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. So brothers and sisters, our Lord and Savior is going to come back. As he ascended to heaven, he's going to descend and he's going to come for you and me. Brothers and sisters, we got to be ready and have a smile on our face when we see him face to face. Amen? Amen. So the second passage we will read is in the book of Luke, chapter 24, starting in verse 46. Then he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And you are my witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endured with power from on high. And he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and he blessed them. Now it came to pass while he blessed them that he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And man, brothers and sisters, just gives me chills thinking about it. How wonderful was that to witness that? But brothers and sisters, our Lord and Savior is coming back for his virgin church. And if you are part of that virgin church, we will get to witness him coming in the sky for us, for you and me. Amen? Amen. Now he tells us here, to go and preach repentance for remission of sins. Repentance is turning from your sinful ways. Remission of sins is forgiveness of sins. Yes. So we need to do that. Not only preach it, not only teach it and tell people, but you and I have to repent from our sinful ways. Because that's how we receive the Holy Spirit. What did he tell them in both passages? To wait for the promise, for the power, which is the Holy Spirit. That's power over the devil and over anything in, in the world. And you have power over the devil when you have the Holy Spirit. And whenever he tempts you, you rebuke him in Jesus' name and he will flee. He cannot stand the name Jesus. You recite a scripture, he will flee. You read the Bible, he's gone. You sing worship songs in your mind, he's not there to tempt you. You understand? So do that, brothers and sisters. Practice that all day long. Worship our Lord and Savior and sing in your mind and spirit and heart. All right? Yes. Now, I'm gonna just read you a few verses to solidify the importance of repentance. In Acts 2.38, it says, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, baptism is a symbol you are proud to be a Christian. You are proud to give your life to the Lord. And he says, if you deny me, I will deny you. So if you have the opportunity to get baptized in the name of Jesus, do it. Because he tells you to. So it's important. But it's not what gets you the Holy Spirit. 
It's repentance. It goes on to tell you, and repent, and you shall receive the Holy Spirit. If you're in prison, you have a death sentence, and there's nowhere to be baptized, and you come to know the Lord, and you say the Lord's Prayer, and you repent genuinely in your heart, God will fill you with that Holy Spirit. Yet you weren't baptized. You understand? But still, He wants you to be proud, and if you have the opportunity, or make the opportunity happen, if you haven't been baptized and you're a believer in Jesus, get baptized in the name of Jesus. And then what? Repent. And then he will fill you with the Holy Spirit. In Acts 5.32, it reads, And we are his witnesses to these things, and so also is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey Him. It doesn't get any clearer than that, brothers and sisters. We all know John 3.16. You must believe in Him. Because if you don't believe that His Son died for your sins and arose, you're already condemned. That's what the Word says. Yes. But then you need to serve our Lord and Savior. If you're not serving God, you're serving the devil. If you're not worshiping God and Jesus, you're serving and worshiping the devil. So get right with God if you are not right yet, because he's coming for his virgin church. The parable that says there's ten virgins. Virgins means purity. They're good people. But only five have the oil when he comes, and they get to go to be with our Lord and Savior in paradise. But the other five don't have the oil. Even though they're good people, they go to church, they read the Bible, they say they're a Christian, but they're not repenting. They're not living for Him. They're not obeying Him in some way of fashion. And they don't have the oil. The oil is the Holy Spirit. And He says, I don't know you. But we know God knows everyone on the planet, sees and hears everything. It means he's not accepting them because they don't have the Holy Spirit. You understand? Yes. One more verse I'll read. This is Romans 8. It tells us, Now if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. So brothers and sisters, it's imperative that if you have not repented of your sinful ways, made proper changes in your life to obey Him, you need to. And if you have, but you've backslid like the prodigal son or daughter, and you got into a rut, you got into perpetual sinning, you've turned your back on Jesus. And anyone who turns his back on the Lord, the Lord turns his back on them. That's why people have accidents and getting diseases. But as the prodigal son came back, he, the Lord ran to him before he got to him. He put a ring on his finger, he put a robe on him, and he had a celebration. He had a party. And if that's you, and you come back to the kingdom, angels in heaven will be celebrating today, brothers and sisters. So if that's you or you've never been saved before and you want to be saved, I will lead you in a prayer of salvation today. Do it today. Don't wait. So please bow your heads with me and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I humbly come before your throne. Brothers and sisters, please repeat after me. I thank you, Lord, for dying on the cross for me. And please, Lord, forgive me for all my sins that I've done. And all the sins that I've done that I don't know what they are. And Lord, help me to renew my mind. 
Take this carnal mind away from me. And help me to make the proper changes in my life. To stop sinning. And please renew my mind completely. And renew my heart from a stony heart to a flesh-loving, pure heart. And please fill me with your Holy Spirit and write my name in the book of life and seal me for the day of redemption. And Father, your will always be done, not mine. And I pray this in the precious name of Yeshua, Jesus, Amen. Amen, brothers and sisters. If you don't have a Bible, get one. The only way we're going to know how to please God and do His will is to read the truth, which is, which is the Bible. Start reading every day. Try to read a chapter a day. And do it at the same time, whatever time of the day you choose. So that you... You always read every day. It's your spiritual food, brothers and sisters. You need it more than the food that you eat. Amen? Amen. Pray every day. In the morning, every morning, preferably on your knees, in private. Thank Him for keeping evil from you throughout the night and ask Him to keep evil from you throughout the day. Ask Him to lead you out of temptation throughout the day. And then at night, never fail. Always ask Him for forgiveness for any sins that you did. And any sins you did, you didn't know you did. We always have to humble ourselves to our Lord. And ask Him to keep evil from you throughout the night. And thank Him for keeping evil from you throughout the day. That covers everything. Diseases, attacks, murders. You name it, accidents, just say those words, keep evil from me. And your Holy Father will have his guardian angel take care of you if you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Ah, so it's a wonderful day. Today's a new day and tomorrow's going to get better. Because of what Jesus did for you and me. Dying on that cross to redeem man back to God. So we could be filled with the Holy Spirit as he rose and left the Comforter. And we could beat sin with the power of Jesus. Because there's power in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. It's all about Jesus. If he had not done what he did for you and me and the rest of the world, God would have destroyed the world with fire as he's going to in the future. But he wanted to save your life and all the people that were to be born in the future. It's amazing grace, brothers and sisters. I don't know about you, but if I was God, I wouldn't have that long suffering that he has. Honestly. I wouldn't have sent my son to die for you or me. I would have destroyed the earth right then. But he loved us that much. So go out there with that in mind. This Romans 12.1 says it's a reasonable service to make our bodies a living sacrifice for him. Amen? Amen. Be ready when he comes in the sky. Have a smile on your face. And what else? Go out to the world, to your family first, and your friends, and your neighbors, and your strangers, and tell them about Jesus and what he did for you. And what happened after? He arose. So that you and I and hopefully them can be part of that virgin church and be ready when he comes. And we'll be with our Lord and Savior forever and ever and ever. Amen? Amen. All right. 
So now, brothers and sisters, you love your Lord, your God, with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and you love your neighbor as yourself, I know God wants you to partake in communion today. So please go get a piece of bread and a little wine. We'll partake in communion. Be thankful for victory, for what our Lord and Savior, Jesus, did for you and me. Amen? Amen. Today's a new day and tomorrow's going to get better. Because we're going to continue our walk with Jesus. And we're going to be ready. We're going to be that virgin church filled with the Holy Spirit. With a smile on our face when we see our Lord and Savior face to face. Amen? Amen. So brothers and sisters, it's a moment to reflect again on what he did on Calvary. And to obey him. As he instructs us to do communion often. Today, we all have to remember what he did on Calvary. So at the Last Supper, after he blessed the meal, he took bread. He broke it and he said, take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And we'll eat together. And he took the wine. And he said, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. And we'll drink together. Dear Heavenly Father, I humbly come before your throne. Pray that you forgive all of our sins and the sins we've done. We don't know what they are. I thank you, Jesus, for being obedient unto death. And I thank you, Father, for having a love for us to send your only begotten Son to die on the cross for us. Dear Heavenly Father, pray that you lead all the brothers and sisters that are called by your name, that are here to worship with you, to continue in repentance, and give them the courage to share the good news with others. And tell them to repent, so they too can be ready when you come for the church. I pray that you keep evil from all of them throughout the week. Lead us all out of temptation throughout the week. And bless them with all their needs and desires and wants, Father. But your will be done, not mine. Pray this in the precious name of Yeshua, Jesus. Amen. Amen, brothers and sisters. So enjoy the rest of the day celebrating what our Lord and Savior did for you and me.